You know, you can be too close for comfort. Let's check on tip number 91. So welcome back to 101 Tips for Interviewers and Interrogators. I'm your host, Stan Walters. We're at tip 91. Are you too close for comfort? Now think about it. Now that's, I'm not talking about distance or proximity. That's another issue altogether. And I can understand that part of your questioning. One of the, th the kind of jokes or funny points that I have in all my classes, I mention about practicing your skills. And one that I warn you about is going home, first of all, and practicing it on the spouse or intimate person in your life. Now, I warn this because a couple of things. Unless you go home and sit down and share what you've learned in the classroom, share the skills of communication we talked about, and make it fair so the person understands where you're asking questions and they have the, the same data of information, it can screw up the intimate relationship, particularly depending on how the questions you're uh, phrased and what you're asking about. I will warn you that it's, uh, it's dangerous to use this on your friends uh, because you'll lose friends, you wind up drinking alone, that'll lead to alcoholism, but your kids are fair game. Now, we, I have a good joke and it's always a good punchline everybody laughs about, but seriously what the problem is is being too close to your subject. Think of the circles of behavior, circles of people around you, and look at four different zones. There's the intimate uh, relationships, personal relationships, uh, social, then public. Okay, two that I'm concerned about are the, the intimate and the personal here. If you're too close to a, a person such as an intimate relationship, someone intimately involved in your life, you are going to be suffer, have a great risk of suffering from subjective uh, analysis or confirmation bias. And one of two things will happen. You're going to see symptoms that are not there because your suspicions are run away with you or you're going to ignore symptoms that you need to see. And what's happening, that intimate relationship is clouding your connection with that person. All right? So you, you're, you're, uh, that confirmation bias could be getting in the way, one way or the other. And it's very hard to separate that subjective from the objective and make a good, genuine, honest analysis. At least on deception, but on your communication, you can still look at the anger, depression, denial, bargaining, acceptance, and you can maintain a response behavior with that person. Same thing's gonna happen to those people in your personal relationships, your, your close friends. Maybe you got a subject or a fellow employee, let's say, for example, someone you've interacted with before, uh, someone you have a good relationship with. We see this happen a lot of times with particular stars or uh, musicians or actors or actresses or people in the public eye that we develop an idea about as who they, we think they are in this short image of public, uh, of, uh, presentation as a public appearance they might have. But in those folks that you're close with, again, you run the risk of confirmation bias because you're, you, know, you're, you think you're seeing symptoms or you, if you think you've been betrayed or by hurt by this person, then you're making an over -anal subjective analysis. So always re remember the risk. If you're having to interview someone who is within an intimate circle or at least using your interview informally, right, such as your kids, loved one, family members, very, very close individuals, or those people who are close to you in your, in your personal circle, that can get in the way and you can easily misdiagnose symptoms or you will miss symptoms. That doesn't mean you can't protect yourself from somebody who's betraying you. But it's extremely important to understand the baseline, understand clusters of behaviors, understand consistency, and recognize the risk that you're in. Never work off assumptions. And remember, just like you would do at a crime scene or an investigation, do you have validation or confirmation from other point? And if you start an attack, as we talked about in, in number 90, about something right or wrong, that sets off a reaction behavior in your subject. So consider in that situation that you may be extremely biased when you're working with those people in your intimate and personal circles. Think about that before you start your interview of those individuals. Okay, interview about events, I understand that, and to get information, but make sure it's genuine, it's not a biased, focused conversation. Be sure to hit the like button, connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media. Uh, love to connect with you because I and make sure you hook up with me on the Lie Guy list. Go to my website, bottom of the page, the Lie Guy list. Make sure you uh, click on there. You're going to get a confirmation link. Hit that link. It adds you through my double opt-in system so you don't get a bunch of spam. So watch for the confirmation to opt in. And I'll give you notices of classes coming up, training programs, webinars, online classes that are available to you. 
so you can work on and keep improving your skills. If you want to set up a program, training program for your agency, in-service hoster program, be sure to give me a call. My calendar is always filling up quickly. So jump in there with dates that fit your schedule and fit your particular needs, and we'll custom design a program for you. So I'll see you back for tip number 92. So Stan Walter reminding you, be safe.